Hi dear friends, in this video I am not going to show you any code but instead I am going to talk about a very useful function called as the base64. So uh, why do we need base64? So for example if you are designing a REST API which is uh, API is application programming interface which is a way a website allows you uh, to communicate uh, with it using programming and uh, uh, things such as uh, mobile apps or any additional things that do not need a user interface often use uh, API to communicate with the uh, websites on the back end. So if you are using a Facebook app, you are probably using a Facebook API which uh, connects with the Facebook uh, system in the back end and uh, do all kind of processing such as uh, image rendering or uh, fetching the image or uploading images or uploading status posts or friend list or whatever and it sends the data to the server and it gets the data back to the server. So REST API is very useful for uh, uh, doing a communication between two different systems. And that's where the base64 concept comes into the picture. So I'm not a very uh, knowledgeable person about the internals of the base64 and I don't think that uh, you also need to know a lot much detail uh, as to what base64 does. But understand the concept of uh, how it can be useful in your web design or your API design or any any which way we want to transfer data between two disparate systems which is which one could be uh, mobile system and another could be a server or between two mobiles and whatever it is, it doesn't matter. So base64 is a way where you can transmit the data uh, by first converting into a certain format using the algorithm uh, called as the base64 and then uh, transmitting it to the uh, another system where it understands that the incoming data is also in the base64 format and it does an application of certain kind of functions or methods in order to convert that data back to the uh, original format. So for example, if you have an image, let me explain the concept of image for you. This is a very nice website. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to um, drop in an image here. Okay, uh, let me just drop this startup PNG. Uh, onto this website and let's see what happens. So it has done something and it has got us this uh, star.png and uh, if you check the code now you'll be quite surprised that it's a massive string. Let me take it for you and uh, copy it and it's quite a bit of gibberish as to it doesn't make any sense to uh, you as a person or if you just give it this uh, file to your friend they probably would not be able to make heads and tails out of it and as a developer we do not need to because the base64 algorithm that we had uh, just talked about now converts all kind of data that you have provided to the uh, the API of this uh, base64 algorithm and it has converted that data it into uh, different kind of characters. So basically you are not passing an image as such between two systems but you are passing some kind of characters and it has been uh, found uh, that this uh, works better than if you are passing the uh, binary system, binary um, data like 1001 and uh, it is more consistent and easily understandable by the other, uh, uh, any other systems. So if you are transferring data from PHP to Java, uh, both systems should have knowledge of how to convert and unconvert the base 60, uh, the file into base64 and they can just communicate data as if they were like on the on the same same platform or or, or even on the same uh, uh. now we take this data and if we just examine it for a moment 
we will find that it is uh, on the uh, uh, if we just examine a few characters here we will find that data is image png base64 so what it has done is it has taken the image file that was a png format and it has added uh, base64 uh, uh, um, and it has added the this string that you see that I have highlighted the data colon image slash png uh, semicolon base64 it tells the other system that the data after this is uh, a png format and should be treated like that so what you gonna do when you receive the data back in system is just to take it off okay and copy the whole thing okay and go to any website uh, for example uh, let's search for a website that converts the image uh, convert uh, base 64 into image okay. and inside that just go and paste the data and generate image so you see the magic the image is now the same as the one that we passed. So there are pretty uh, good advantages to it. First is that you can convert any uh, uh, image or text or, uh, or or any kind of file and uh, into certain identifiable characters and they can be transferred around in multiple systems and every system provided you have given that string that we had talked about here, this one. Uh, properly the system will be able to decode this and create the uh, original file. The disadvantage could be uh, the fact that the data uh, during encoding increases a lot in size and uh, uh, it may impact the performance as I have been reading a lot on this. So you can have a look at it and this is like a, a, a very small uh, disadvantage except when you are dealing with the large files okay so uh, but but overall it is much much better to use and it's much easier to use a base64 encoded file and in the next video i'm going to tell you how to do the base64 encoded file in a php system and uh, first we are going to change the uh, image into a base encoded string and then we are going to decode that string back to the image file There are a lot of links on the base64 uh, on Wikipedia and it's pretty complicated. You don't have to know everything, you just have to know how it works. But if you are interested in understanding the concept of uh, how the base64 algorithm works, maybe you can have a look at uh, how um, anything is designed. So for example, uh, if you have the input as pleasure, the output would be this, which is like unreadable for you but uh, it's quite readable by the program that is trying to decode this so it's, it's a good uh, uh, so it's a good uh, uh, repository of information about how page 64 works and how you can utilize it to your advantage and in the next video I'm going to show you how to actually use the uh, PHP 2 encode and decode an uh, image file. And I hope uh, I was able to open up some kind of curiosity in you regarding the base64 algorithm and uh, go ahead and read more about it to understand to have a better understanding of the process.